Thank you very much, colleagues. Um, good morning. Uh, colleagues, thank you very much. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the IFP to welcome you to this post Philippine One local government elections briefing by the President Emeritus and the President of the IFP. Um, I've introduced, I'm sure it's familiar faces nonetheless. You've been interacting with all of us during this campaign. On the far right is the Chairman of the National Campaign Committee, Honorable uh, Naren Singh, the President Emeritus and IFP founder, and then next him is the Honorable President. Uh, we are also joined in here by the National Secretary of the Youth Brigade, Mabaso is at the back, and the Director of Communications uh, is also here, Vizu Hanumeva, and we are also quite happy to have amongst us uh, Princess Uzi, who is also here with us. I'm going to, um, colleagues, um, we're going to take the uh, statement by the President and then the President Emeritus, and then we'll field questions um, after that. And once again, sorry to make you all work on a Sunday, but news never sleeps. Um, so good morning <laughs> um, and welcome and thank you for your patience. Uh, we apologize for this 15 minute delay. Um, and I therefore request uh, the president to begin and then the president emeritus uh, will um, start. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the media for joining us today as we unpack the results of the 2021 local government election and what these results mean for the IFP. Can I also greet His Excellency Umtuanawa Pindangene, the TG, and my colleagues. As you can imagine, we are pleased and humbled by the exceptional performance of the IFP, particularly in Wazulu Natal. It confirms the strong partnership of trust that we have built with the people. While we have good reason to celebrate our electoral success, the time of celebrating must be short-lived because we know how much needs to be done, we will waste no time in getting to work. From the onset, I want to thank the people of South Africa, the voters who heard the message of the IFP and responded to it on the 1st of November by giving us their support and their vote. I want to make it clear that we do not take these votes lightly. We understand that South Africa has hit rock bottom and that every vote for IFP was an appeal for change, an appeal for a leadership that our people can trust. As the president of the IFP, I would like to express our deep appreciation to the IFP's founder and president emeritus, Prince Mangusu Tupteleze, for allowing us to honor his legacy 
in this campaign. Prince Mausu Tuptelezi was not a mere figurehead in this election. He worked incredibly hard, taking our message of hope to the, elect to the electorate. We are humbled by the energy and time that he gave to this campaign. It was an inspiration to many of our leaders and structures, urging us to keep going and do more. I therefore want to thank Prince Mutelezi on behalf of the IFP because of the good results, because the good results are in large part not only to he, due to his contribution but to the brand that he built over many years. It is a brand that we, as the leaders of the IFP, are proudly taking forward. Many of our leaders at all levels worked tremendously hard, and we are sincerely grateful. I know that many of our staff Organizers, officials, and councillor candidates saw very likely of their time, of their families during the past month. I thank them all, not just for their commitment, but for doing it with such obvious belief in the IFP's importance to the future of good governance. Above all, we thank God for a peaceful election that took place in the midst of the threat of COVID-19. We will render our service both to God and his people, the people of South Africa. I therefore make a commitment today that the IFP will honor every vote providing ethical leadership and servant leadership to secure good governance where we have been asked to govern. To ensure that we do this, within 14 days after the inauguration of all new municipal councils, we will be entering into a performance agreement with all our mayors which will focus on the implementation of the 10-point plan contained in the IFP's 2021 Local Government Manifesto. After the first 100 days in office, the performance of every mayor will be monitored and reviewed against this agreement. If any one of them has failed to perform the IFP will not hesitate to withdraw him or her. We have no intention of coming to the voters in 2024 to apologize for our poor performance and ask for another chance. We are not prepared to do that. Complacency and mediocre services will not be tolerated. Good and competent governance is what people need. We will give the electorate every reason to believe in the IFP's solid record of integrity and good governance. We will honor every vote as a way of saying thank you for putting your vote to trust the IFP. Having received such a strong support, the IFP will now be expanding its work of improved service delivery, particularly here in Wazulu Natal, where we serve as the strongest opposition to the ruling party. The IFP intends making a powerful impact on the way things are done especially in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. We are serious 
about running clean municipalities. In all the municipalities where we will take over to govern, the IFP will be doing an audit of current contracts and appointments to ensure that they all meet with the regulatory standards. Where necessary, we will recruit efficient municipal managers and CFOs who will assist our political office bearers to run clean governance. Jobs for PALS is out, tender fraud is out, mismanagement and wasteful expenditure are definitely out, consequence management will be the order of the day. We will not tolerate even a hint of corruption. Because of these fundamental principles of the IFP, we will not compromise when it comes to cooperation with other political parties. The, it, indeed, there is an unavoidable need for coalition and cooperation necessitated by Hang municipalities. There is no way for these Hang municipalities to begin working unless parties form coalition. We will not get into a coalition for the sake of a coalition. Accordingly, the IFP's National Council met yesterday and established a team to begin coalition talks. This team is led by our chairperson of the National Campaign Committee, the Honorable Mr. Naren Singh MP, who is joined by the chairperson of the Daily Management Committee and the KZN Provincial Chairperson, Honorable Councillor Taminduli, joined by our national spokesperson, the Honorable Mr. Mkulego Shengwa MP, and our Gauteng Provincial Chairperson, the Honorable Mr. Bonginko Sidlamini, MPL. This team will be engaging all political parties who have reached out to us to discuss coalitions. But let me be upfront. Where we will govern as a leading party in Wazulu Natal, we will not enter into a coalition with the ANC. This is for simple reason. The ANC has not been honest with us in the past. They have let down the people of South Africa and the voters clearly express themselves when it comes to the ANC. In due course, once all negotiations are complete, as many parties are approaching us, we will provide feedback so that everyone will be clear on the IFP's position. I can already tell you, however, that we have two firm non-negotiables. We will not enter into any cooperation agreement with a party that advocates or supports racism. Neither will we enter any cooperation agreement with a, a party clouded by controversies of corruption and municipal mismanagement. Our aim is to provide the best level of service possible and to do so with absolute integrity. The next few years will be the building blocks on which the IFP establishes its position for 2024. We intend taking back the province of Wazulu Natal in the next national and provincial elections. And we believe that the electorate is ready to walk this path 
with the IFP to restore integrity to governance. As this is the path forged by the IFP's founder, we thank all South African compatriots for partnering with the IFP in its mission of rebuilding our communities. We are sober and we understand the huge responsibility the voters placed on our shoulders. We will not disappoint the voters. We will make sure our municipalities become centers of excellence and delivery of quality services to our people. This is the promise and commitment we make as the IFP to the people of South Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, uh, for that statement. May I, at this point in time, request the IFP founder and president emeritus, Prince Mutelezi, to address us. How is it? Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen of the media, I think that our president has said everything that needs to be said. And I would like simply to echo the, his appreciation for, to the electorate for putting their trust in the IFP. While some of the votes we receive, we receive are clearly from people who have identified the IFP as a solution for our country's present crisis, many of the votes represent people who have worked with the IFP for decades. These stalwarts and patriots have worked alongside us as South Africa went through some of the greatest crises, as you are aware, ladies and gentlemen. They know what the IFP is capable of, and I want to thank them spe specifically for keeping the faith and for keeping the IFP strong. Because now, in the present crisis, the IFP can lead again. It has never been my style to boast. So I shall not regale you with statistics of the IFP successes in this election. Because you, all of you have seen the results, and no doubt you have all carefully considered their meaning. The fact that the IFP gained 112 additional seats clearly indicates a party on an upward trajectory. But this is no surprise, of course. Already in 2019, if you may remember, the IFP was placed on a strong upward trajectory, after which we continued to win by election after by election. We were called the comeback kids, mm. and everyone expected the IFP to do well in 2021. The deterioration in our country's governance and well being has only served to emphasize. The IFP is a champion of integrity. The IFP feels a very specific need in the present body politic. The need for trustworthy leaders. And I'm incredibly proud to see the IFP taking forward its legacy of leadership, integrity. It is a source of great satisfaction to me ladies and gentlemen, to know that the IFP remains strong and uncom uncompromising on its principles. It is really a vindication, I think, of the careful path we have walked to transition from the IFP's first chapters to the maturing of a party that constantly perches above its weight. I would like to express my support and appreciation for the leadership provided by our president. 
under his guidance, uh, the enormous amount of work was put in to ensure the success of our campaign. To all who contributed, I say thank you. Indeed, I say thank you as well to you, ladies and gentlemen, as our country's journalists and reporters for working tirelessly to bring news, updates, and thought-provoking debates into the public domain. Thank you, for, too, for being vigilant against electoral fraud and for holding not only government, but also the IEC accountable at every turn. So long as the pillars of our de de democracy remain intact and functioning, there is hope, I think, for our country, South Africa. I look forward now to seeing the IFE's impact. This indeed just, is just the beginning. And I, I would really thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for, for coming here to give us the opportunity to give you this pressing on, on a Sunday morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to the President Emeritus. Um, we will now uh, take a uh, question. I thought that you do too. And introduce yourself and the media house in which you come from. And uh, we will be good to go. So, that, one question at a time so that nothing gets lost and then we'll come around. Um, right, Mr. President? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mavuso, on raising that question. <clears throat> As I clearly spelled it, that yesterday the National Council of the IFP said and took a firm decision that in municipalities where we will be leading, we will not get into a cooperation with the ANC for these reasons. The history of the IFP and the ANC, specifically in Wazul Natal, is not good. And during the election campaign, many utterances that has been said by the ANC to the IFP would need time for ANC to attend and correct. We have many outstanding issues. We have the issue of Mzalangumalo in the Zululand district, which the ANC have flatly refused, the Wazulu Natal leadership have fat, flatly refused to correct the naming of Zululand with Mzala Ngumalo, knowing very well the book that was written by Mzala Ngumalo, throwing every insult to the founder of the IFP. We are not going to compromise that one. And the insult which has been thrown by the ANC recently during the campaign time mixing the issues of the royal family, mixing the role of the prime minister of the traditional, the traditional prime minister of the Zulu nation, accusing the IFP falsely. We are not going to entertain any coalition with the ANC. Above all, the people of KwaZulu Natal were very clear. They rejected the ANC in many municipalities. We can't bring them back to governing the municipalities where people 
they have indicated that enough is enough of the ANC. Thank you very much. Um, there's a hand for that, and we'll come to that. Right. Um, Sabelo, <clears throat> the IFP National Executive Committee will be sitting tomorrow to finalize the deployment of office bearers to the various municipalities that we will be leading as a political party. As we know, the first municipalities are sitting on Wednesday. We will be ready by Wednesday to announce who will be deployed as mayors, deputy mayors, or speakers. But we have a, an internal way of informing the public. But we'll finalize it tomorrow and then convey it accordingly at the appropriate time to the public. Then, on the, on the question of the Hang municipalities, I think, Sabelo, you would need to revisit your mathematics. The Hang municipalities, where the ANC is leading, we are not prepared to get into a cooperation under the ANC. We are not as the IFP. We will remain as an opposition. But where the IFP is leading in terms of numbers, there is sufficient figures from other political parties with whom we can make a coalition and govern according to the best interest of the people of Wazul Natal. Thank you. I think uh, this is the last session that we now here. We had two gems. The should. Uh, master from Sunday Times. Uh, so the IFP has not been consistently governing a lot in, in local government. You've had the likes of Uganda, uh, the Zuland district. What, what I want to know is, is whether or not you have the institutional capacity. And um, in, in terms of, of corruption, I, I, I get a feeling that you, you believe the IFP is completely insulated from people taking advantage if, 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 if you believe that your, your employees are not going to entertain um, corruption. But you have people who have been living off inflating tenders and you know and doing a whole lot of, of wrong things. And you guys are taking advantage of that culture at some municipalities. What, what is the plan regarding those two points? Firstly, on the question of institutional memory or capacity, the victory was not a surprise. We knew we will do very well in the local government election. So we had done our groundwork. We have made the preparation. We have taken stock. We know the municipalities where we will have to employ new municipal managers. We have done the groundwork because we are not caught off guard. We had done the preparation for the campaign and the indications were clear that we will win a municipality A, B, C. We are very clear on that one. So we will not be found wanting. That is why after 14 days we will enter into a performance agreement with all our mayors. In that meeting, there will be municipal managers in that meeting, but we will not enter into a performance agreement with the municipal managers 
because it will be a responsibility of the mayor. But we want every municipal manager to know that we made a commitment of 10 points to the public. Both the mayor and the municipal manager have a responsibility to ensure that we deliver what we promise to the people of our country. So now on that issue, we are well and good. <clears throat> the issue of corruption, that is why all our councillors signed an agreement of clean governance. As we have indicated also in this statement, each and every mayor will be monitored and reviewed closely. Anyone, we have told our candidates that one, we are not going to apologize to the public and say we did not deliver, give us another chance. No, no, no. A councillor and a person deployed as a mayor will have to deliver. If a person is underperforming, we will not hesitate to recall a person and show the door to a person. Anyone who will get into corrupt activities, we will be very clear, because the people of South Africa have said, spoken clear, that they are against corruption, they want services now. Any amount of corruption rob our people of true service delivery, which will be seen now. We will be very <clears throat> categoric in terms of our actions, and that is why we announce it early, so that no one will cry that, but you are too harsh. No, no, no. We, we just want to set a record that the legacy which Prince Mangosutu Telezi made for our country to lead with integrity and honesty, which is what people want in their lives to ensure that they benefit from the resources of the country. We are not going to allow anyone to, to interrupt that um, record of integrity and uh, come with uh, practices of corruption. Anyone who will inflate prices People must shout once we discover that indeed prices were inflated. We will definitely take an action. Thank you, Mr. President. Tabiza. But my brother, you see, there is a team which I have read, which is led by our chairperson of the National Campaign Committee. He has been a leader of the negotiating team on coalition in 2016. It was very difficult. We have confidence in our team that we will be able to cross every bridge that might be a problem in getting a government that will serve our people in the municipalities where we are a leading party. I do not want to get involved on issues of land. Let us be frank. Some of the issues might be issues that are dealt at a national level. Our team will engage all political parties who have an interest of seeing the local government functioning. It is not within the competence of a local municipality, but I don't want to get into that one in details. And it is you who is saying the DA is a racist political party. 
we are not classifying the IFP, the DA as a racist political party. We will be engaging the DA as a political party that has interest of the people of South Africa to ensure that municipalities are functioning. Our team, we have been engaged with the DA in some of the municipalities in Wazulu Natal. All we are saying, a political party that makes it as its policy, that it believes in racism, then I don't think that is what you will find in the policy of the DA, except it is said by you. I don't want us to be misquoted on that statement. But, um, and then Makosi, and then we'll come back to this side. I, I would like to, sorry, those who are not from Eastern Africa. I would like to go back to this position that I gave you, so that uh, we are not misquoted, because I believe that guy was put there to get it in the statement. You are saying you are not going to go into a position with the party that advocates racism. Uh, surely then the IP must have some way of diagnosing parties that are that are the for racism. Um, which are those political parties are able to give us their names exactly? Um, my second question if I may Mr. Sure. Uh, I guess the most interesting thing that will come out of the of the IP if it delivers in this is that's that audits of skills and contracts and municipal levels. Um, are you able to give us a timeline? That's when we can expect to get that kind of um, audience that we are part of. I'm sure it's going to be very interesting. Let me start on the first question. There are so many political parties that contested the local government election. And even if I can ask you, Duma, how many are they, you might not be able to tell me exactly. That is why, therefore, we can only look closely at the policy of a political party that intends getting into a coalition with us. But we are clear on the question of racism, we will not be part. So now, I think I've answered you on that one. On the question of the skills audit, we will take as minimum time as possible 60 days as a minimum time because we do not want to say something unreasonable. Doing a skills audit is not something that you can do overnight, but it will be a priority because to ensure that we deliver, we must have the necessary skills in place. Where skills are in place or maybe some are misplaced, you will need to begin a process of doing the proper placement of people in terms of the skills they have. Where there is clear evidence that skills are not there, begin a process of recruiting competent and qualified people to ensure that you deliver on the mandate you have as a local government. Sorry, sorry, can I just hold up because not making a dialogue there are so many political parties that contested, but frankly, the uh, partnerships that will be significant out of this is what's the EFF saying, what's the DA saying, what the IP saying, what the ANC saying. We've already confirmed that you will be talking with the DA. So I guess what the direct question is, will you be talking with the EFF? Yes, we will be talking with the EFF. I think that let's, let's clarify that, if I may, Mr. President, and President Emeritus, and say, the, the coalition discussions are a mixed bag. We've got municipalities where some parties don't appear, where other parties appear. So all of them are of significance. Um, and so that we do not live here with the perception that these are, are discussions among your so-called big parties, the IFP, DA, and the they, they, they are all important. I think they, and we have to afford them the respect that they have got a mandate as well from the electorate and they've got a role to play. Um, so that it's, we, 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 we have a meaningful discussion. Um, some, you, these are local elections and all politics is local. You've got 
uh, in Newcastle, the, is the, the tea, the sugar, tea, the sugar pot, right? Yeah. They've got an interest of a particular demographic. Abasal Basem Kanya would in Umsabia Linga. They are a, a particular uh, 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 interest because we have to respect the issues around locality as well. So I just wanted to say, to, let us not, be, nobody must be seen to be pushed aside, save for the qualification that uh, the president has made in so far as the IFP ANC relations here in Guazmanata. I just wanted to make um, that point. Yeah, and above all, Mashasha, there are independents, quite a number of them, who make a, a great impact where you only need one seat. And you will need to check the statements ever made by that independent in terms of the two non bills we have as the IFP. Yes, but I think at a larger scale, the today's engagement with the medium was to lay out what we have done. If you then want to get into the policies, it's really a matter for another day. We wouldn't really think it would be fair to start getting on policies now, um, <clears throat> uh, other than what we have uh, felt should be the key, the gist of the today's uh, briefing. But on all matters, we, we do have policies. In fact, we have governed, and we are still governing municipalities. We, we know what needs to be done and how it has to be done. We govern the province for 10 years. Yeah, we govern the province for 10 years. So now, in terms of policies, we are rich as the IFP, but I don't think it's, it, it is the right uh, time to deal with this one now. Um, Chair of NCC? Yeah, President, if I may just come in on that, uh, sorry, with you. Priority will be basic service delivery to the citizens of any locality. Water, roads, sanitation, safety and security, this is going to be the priority, and these fall within the purview of municipalities. Municipalities can deliver on those items. But generally, I think for a municipality to create a conducive environment for investment, for invest investors to come in, promote agricultural initiatives, promote empl uh, employment for the young people, uh, work with self-reliance so that we can give people an assistance so that they can develop themselves. You know, in the past when we governed in KwaZulu Natal under the leadership of Mkwana uh, here, uh, His Excellency, and learning from what he did in KwaZulu, I mean, there was always helping people to help themselves. I think Prince has also said, and President, we don't want to create a welfare state in South Africa. We cannot afford a welfare state in South Africa where 20 million people rely on welfare grants. But we'd rather give people something so that they can develop themselves because that gives them more dignity, more pride, and a municipality needs to assist in that regard. And this, these are some of the things that we would make sure that our municipalities do. But in addition to governance, what we intend doing, and we've been having discussions but not finalized, we want to set up a monitoring and evaluation unit it at head office, a like a local government director, where we would have professionals, we will engage professionals, an auditor, a lawyer, researchers, etc., so we can hone in on what our municipalities are doing and not doing. 
in terms of service delivery, in terms of proper financial management, MFMA, etc., etc. So we will be on their backs as head office. We're not going to have a distant relationship with our people on the ground and our governors on the ground. We're going to be on their backs to make sure that the pledge by His Excellency over the number of years that he's been leader of this party, the pledge by our president that we made to the citizens are kept in word and in deed. Deed is going to be more important than words, and we will make sure that we have this overarching unit right here at head office to monitor, uh, monitor these things. The, the, the final clarification is that on policy matters, the policies are available on our website. Um, the 10-point plan of the manifesto that was launched on the 30th of September arises out of policy as well um, of the IFP. Um, more so, the track record of the IFP in service delivery is anchored in party policy in the municipalities that we have governed and in the province. And the voting trend of the IFP in National Assembly or in the provincial legislatures is also guided by party uh, and policy. So we can have that policy um, discussion. Moreover, the issues you raise um, around rates and so on, yes, people, you know, user pay policy has to apply um, for those that have. And party policy is that um, you've got indigent families uh, and persons in the various communities and provision has to be made available for those um, so I know this that you said that EHF has got a defining policy feature, it's expropriation without compensation. We differ very little with the EFF. It's just that we say expropriation with compensation. And we've been having those discussions um, in so far as the Section 25 matter is concerned. So I think we can have a meaningful discussion around all these issues. Suffice it to say that we cannot be a political party without policy, and the policy is um, are there. So let's have a discussion and engagement after. But when municipalities have been constituted as well, um, you can be able to have an interaction with those. The performance agreements will be policy-based um, as well. So I just thought, uh, without being long-winded, I can just uh, make that addition. Right, Mr. Gina, finally, you come finally. to you and then that might be. So, President, I just want to find clarity because um, whether first the talks that have been happening between the AMS and the IP, are those talks still going on? And uh, those talks and negotiations, how are they going? Also, what is decision uh, and the stance by the IFP not to work with the AMC hinder those talks or have any effect on those talks? The talks between the IFP and ANC are at a national level. Those talks are still ongoing, and I would not want to get into details, but you see, specifically the issue of Mzala Nyumalo, <clears throat> the leadership of the ANC at a national level, they know that matter as well as the decision on how that matter was supposed to be addressed. That is why we are reducing certain matters specifically to the leadership of Guazuru Natal. Talks between the ANC and IFP deals with broad national issues of reconciliation, not necessarily local governance. So now those talks are still on and they are taking its course and they have no bearing on what is the position we take when it comes to the local governance in Wazulu Natal. We will definitely open doors for discussion. The IFP is a champion of negotiations in any way. We will open the doors, but we wanted this one to be known because we have a position on it. 
Mr. Mabuso? Yes, and which is there any other colleague who has not spoken first? Right, then we'll just run by the line. Up, Kess. To come to that question, <clears throat> while we agree on what you are saying, but the competency for water service delivery is not the national government, but the district municipality. When the district is showing us evidence of projects that are being implemented, and they show us plan B, that in cases where people do not have running water, there is a system, like in Zululand, where you are referring to, there is a timetable, a schedule for the water tankers. That in point A, there is a water tanker on Monday. In point B, a water tanker on Tuesday. There is a rotation. If they show us that people do not stay for 10 days with no water, let me take you to Mthatuze. Mthatuze is not a rural area. Mthatuze <clears throat> at large is composed of an urban area. Mbangeni, Eskawini. They stay about 10 days with no water, with no plan of any contingency in place. So we cannot allow our mayor to keep people in the dark. If there is a problem, there must be plan B. Then we will make a judgment on the, on the basis that when there was a challenge, a person able to utilize his or her brains to come with plan B, other than keeping people staying for weeks with no water and with no clue of what is going to happen. You know, if there is a problem, you must inform people account to people, take people along, tell them what is plan B. That is all we will be looking at that what is the initiative taken by the face of the municipality which is the face of the people of the IFP to, <clears throat> to ensure that people have confidence in their governing unit at a local level that even if there is a problem, but our municipality will always come with plan B. If you go to Zululand, because it is um, a general story that is said by people that there is no water in Zululand. But we have never heard Zululand blocking all roads because of water. But we don't talk about King Zedwayo district, where people block roads, burn tires, we don't talk much about Umkanyagute, where I come from, where we stay about four weeks with no clue when are you going to get water. If you don't have means, extra means, to go and fetch water on your own at about 20 kilometers, you just go to where cattle and animals drink and use that water. That is what we will not tolerate. We are taking over Umkanyagute. We will not tolerate um Kanyagute to misuse the funds at um Kanyagute and people stay for months with no water and with no clue of when are they going to get a water tanker or when is the engine is going to be fixed. If the engine is broken down, there must be an information that goes to the public that we have a problem with the engine, we are working on it. If it takes more than three days, there must be plan B how people are going to get water, because if it takes more than three days with no water, there is no life. Water is a basic necessity. 
We cannot hide that this is a competence of a national government. No. The issue of electricity, yes, the money comes from the national government as <clears throat> the funding for electricity and a variety of activities at a local municipality. But a municipality must effectively use the money allocated for electricity once it reaches the coffers of the municipality. We must be able to trace where did this money go. If you take the money for electricity and you build the hall and you say, once I get the money, then I will fix, I, I will connect people electricity, we will take actions against that particular mayor because you are misappropriating a certain fund designated for a basic need of, other, of our people. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Are you fine? Okay, sure. The last one. We are quite aware of what you are saying, Mavuso. We are expecting many people who will be joining the municipalities, who will be governing, some who will not know their records or their deep hidden interests. As the Treasurer General said, we will establish a unit that will be composed of various experts to look at the municipalities that will be governing. We will be watching every move in a municipality. We want to showcase that the IFP, given the opportunity, excels. That the IFP, given an opportunity, deliver services. We, that, is, that is our focus, which we will dedicate our attention, effort, and every energy. When you come to the issue of a COJ, we are clear where we govern as the IFP, we will not get into a coalition with the ANC. Any discussion, as I said uh, when uh, <clears throat> my brother asked, that we are not close even to ANC in Wazulu-Natal. We will be engaging them, but we will be expressing our position in terms of coalition. So whatever happens in any other provinces, because circumstances differ, I qualified that in Wazulu-Natal, we have deep issues with the ANC leadership in Wazulu Natal, which is not a similar case when it comes to the national leadership of the ANC. I, I was responding to the question of Mzala Niman. The top leadership of the ANC has a position on the issue of Mzala Nimalo, while the Wazulu Natal has a different position. That is why we treat Wazulu Natal differently because there are issues which we must resolve, which we feel very strongly about as the IFP. Umalanga province, Free State, Gauteng will be getting into the discussions based on prevailing circumstances. You know, at COJ, our MMC for housing excelled. Oh, he's yeah. just back here. Uh, Mr. Mabas, he excelled under the government of the ANC. Our MMC for, <clears throat> for transport excelled at COJ. That is why we win wards in this election. That is why we increased our support. Every political party has an intention to grow in order to govern. So if you have an opportunity to be given a responsibility at a government level and deliver services and people have an opportunity to say 
if it were IFP, things would have been better. We will not let that opportunity pass by. Maybe let me say on a lighter note on the issue you are raising about these uh, interesting characters. You your Florida roads crew as your Viano crew as um, you tend to pray news for the purposes of entertainment, not not as bad thing. We need to run a clean government, also one based on ethics, an ethical moral government, continuously compromised by the issue of lavish lifestyles by those who are close or with proximity to power and the abuse of municipal resources. So that blesser crew, that sugar daddy crew, um, it's like all those things uh, are, 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 are inconsistent with what the IFP wants. Yes, people can have fun, you know, that's not a problem. People can party, but it must not be at the expense of government and governance and the abuse of municipalities. And that's what has happened. That's what has happened here in Debit, uh, in particular, that you have got uh, it is groove and a mentality in so far as uh, governance is concerned to think entertainment is service delivery. It is not. And it is, an, and particularly the risk that it comes with in so far as gender based violence is concerned, the abuse of women, the spiking of dreams, and all these other things. It emanates out of the kind of characters which have been key features and key players at governments, and the people have rejected that. So I think, Mr. President, this has been uh, brought up. I think it's a discussion we need to have mm. with um, office bearers to be responsible and to demonstrate moral leadership and moral governance. And um, there's a moral decay which arises out of this is growth and a mentality, uh, which is at local government. Let me, therefore, at this point, really thank uh, the president and the president emeritus. I know that uh, they expressed uh, thanks to uh, each other, but I think on behalf of the party, Your Excellency, the president emeritus, the honorable president, we want to thank you for your leadership, for your guidance, for your availability. Uh, sometimes when it comes to this trip, but it's all been in the collective interest of work. Uh, the calls at the odd hours, uh, wanting to make sure that uh, those of us who are in the intricacies of running the campaign got your thoughts and your ideas. We are very, very grateful um, to, to you. We know that sometimes we throw in the deep end at odd hours at last minute, but you are always willingly uh, complying really with that. So we are eternally grateful for uh, your leadership and we're going to continue and to need it um, in the new uh, era as we move um, forward. Lastly, but not least, um, I would like to thank, as His, pres the, His Excellency the President Emeritus has done, from the Communications Directorate of the IFP, thank you, our colleagues uh, in the media. Yes, we have had our fights, we have had our disagreements, uh, but I think all in all it has been in the kindred spirit of a professional relationship and our obligations and responsibilities as a party, and of course to push back on uh, anything which we may have felt was not right, but also at the same time, um, we appreciate the open door policy uh, which we have. So colleagues, um, thank you very much, uh, and we wish you well uh, moving forward, uh, and as long as good government. I'm going to take this opportunity uh, now and hand over to the chairperson of the campaign committee for one last special uh, item which she wishes to render and, and to then confirm that the leadership will be available afterwards for one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, interviews where uh, it may be necessary. On a very last but serious note, that is it, I was sharing with you the issue of this picture uh, on the t-shirts and that one there and to say for those of us who are young, it was very much consistent with the song, Isandla Somosa, Upete Nisa. So um, thank you very much um, for that as well. Colleagues, thank you very much.
Uh, Chairperson, Your Excellency, and uh, me members of the media, I know si Omi la manje. We've had a long, long, long campaign uh, of 42 days working very hard. So we thought we must wet your throats a little <laughs> with something that's non-alcoholic, I might add. This is not a party, but I think it's always traditional to celebrate a victory. And we want to celebrate with you because you also contributed to our success. So we will get uh, uh, Mr. Bango, who was very instrumental, to come and open this. And God put in Yamas no way. But this is not alcoholic. This is not alcoholic. We've got more for journalists, don't worry. Maybe let's get a little bit of a I guess we should take a in writing. Uh, Excellency, and the founder and the president emeritus of our party, Prince Mutelezi, the honorable president, Mr. Navisa, our national spokesperson, the honorable Kulewo Sengwa, the national campaign chairperson, the honorable uh, Mr. Singh, uh, members of the media. Uh, this is just to celebrate the victory uh, that we have achieved as the party in the local government elections of 2021. <laughs> Well, let's say uh, cheers. Thank you very much, everybody. But the hard work starts now, as His Excellency has said. The hard work starts now. Mr. President, well done. National spokesperson, well done. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Hi, no alcoholic man. This is alcohol free. We've got more for you, and there's some snacks and refreshments.